Good morning everyone. I want to quickly do a short video on how to use MATLAB to solve shear force um, bending moment um, diagram problem. Um, I find this code online. Uh, the code has been written, so let's uh, download the code and use it to solve our problem. Shear force bending moment MATLAB code. So let's see. Okay. Um, so this is the code on MATLAB and file exchange website. So uh, if you go through, you find a catalog of five star rating. So it's a good code and it should be able to solve most of our problems. So we download this. So after downloading, uh, let's go and click on the file, show the folder. Okay, then go to that file and then take it to I've created this folder. This is where I'll be solving the problems. Uh, so let us paste what we just uh, brought in, and this is the code. So now I'm going to um, I can extract everything here. Let's see if that works. Okay, now it's extracted. So then, so let's open. Okay, so this is the license I found. I was interested in that. Okay, so then, uh -huh, so this is um, the the files. Um, they all work together to solve the problem. So let's quickly see if we have a readme file here that will teach us how to do okay, This is the readme file. Alright, so let's open the readme and then have a look at um, what I mean, the content is. Okay, yeah, the readme says um, this file explains how to use the SFBM code, that is the shear force and bending moment, I mean, and it's accessible to solve the problem. So the, the first argument that you supply to the code uh, is the, the name of the problem that you want to solve. It might be example 1, example 2, or example 200, or maybe problem 30, any number. It's just, it's just um, it's, uh, you have the free choice of that. Then the second argument um, has to be, um, the first one has to be a string, I mean, it's just a name. Then the second one has to be uh, contain the length, a vector containing the length, and the position of the two uh, supports. Then, if it is just one support, just put only that one support. Then you have just that is for two supports. You have uh, this one has a length of twenty, and the first supports are three. The second supports are seventeen. Then for a cantilever, you have just one support. So probably to be at the beginning or at the end. So if it's at the beginning, this is just to be twenty and zero. That is where you have the first support or to be 20 and 20. So then, uh, if it is a beam on the floor, that means um, it has no, I mean, no support at all. So there will just be only the length. That's a argument will just be just the length of the, of the beam. So you're not going to have any uh, indication of the location of support. Then from the third argument on, you, you have the choice of placing them in any other. They are just the loads on the beam. So for the load on the beam, you can have different kind of load. You can have concentrated force, you can have moment, you can have distributed load. So for the concentrated load or the point load, you use uh, the string CF as the keywords. Then for the moment, you have the uh, string M. Then for distributed load, you have the string DF. All right, so now let us see how to use them. So for example, if I have a load that is acting downward, I mean, a concentrated load acting downward of magnitude of 5. So because acting downward that is minus 5, then if you displace at point 4, then that argument that describes the load will then be CF, I mean, a string, minus 5, then 4. But if it is acting upward, then I'm going to take it with a negative sign, then it's going to be CF, 5, and then 4. All right, so if it is a distributed load, Okay, let us talk about the moment first. If it is moment, if it is um, the clockwise, there's going to be negative. If it is uh, anti-clockwise, going to be positive. So just the same way as the concentrated force. So just like just that, instead of CF, you have M to show like this moment, and then then you have the magnitude of the torque, and then and uh, its location. So that's just that. So, but for the distributed load, it's uh, a bit more complex. But to keep things short. You just if it is uh, if if it is uniformly distributed load, just mention the value of the I mean of the that distribution the the constant value 
for example like in this case here you have it is distributed df then magnitude of 5 starting from 2 to to 10 all right so we're going to see an application of that so see how to use that so to do that let us quickly look for problems to solve so uh, uh, the, an example has been provided here this is a problem 200 uh, with uh, a length the theme is of length 20 and then you have uh, uh, one support at 5, then support at 20. You have a concentrated force uh, of minus 2, acting downward at 0. Then you have a moment of 10, acting at 8. You have a distributed load of 5 between 1 and 3. You have the moment with the torque of um, and the clockwise direction, uh, acting at point 12, map to 10. Then you have a distributed load of minus 4, that is acting downward distributed load. Then you have a um, starting from 14 to 17 so you can quickly copy this line of code then take it down here and run to see i mean what we get all right so then while it's running we can just quickly come in and just look for problems that we can solve so you share force share force memory moment problems let's see if we can get something out all right so we can look at this is one uh, so let's see if we can get another one that we we'll look at um, all right the solution is coming up all right okay wow so nice one so here you have you have uh, okay fine so you have the free body diagram showing us uh, the legend for the reacting concentrated load you have the applied concentrated force you applied uh, distributed force so it's the key you know? so then you have um, an applied torque so this is your torque so this is applied torque so you can have a reactive torque too i mean like a reacting torque if for the case of a cantilever so if that is what you're trying to solve for example this particular this same problem i can decide to turn it into a cantilever and see how the problem looks like like just providing just one support and maybe i eliminate this load of two uh, uh two kilo newton right here i mean at the beginning uh so let's 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 do that so we have you have your shear force diagram and then you have your bending moment right here everything solves that then you have the list of the equation telling you that between zero and one from here to here uh then so uh, if you look at this x it is in, is in scale in 10 meters which means this is 0 0.1 actually mean one meter I mean, if you multiply that by 10 and this two actually mean 20 so that is the length of the beam so so and then if you uh if we want to run another test we can come here and just bring up the same problem again uh, okay let's say i want to use a cantilever now and i'm placing the supports at zero all right so and then i decided to move this concentrated force at this point so let me call this guy problem 200 e in your test and then we just leave everything the way it is and then we we'll run again so and wow so this is the new solution it looks different but fine this is exactly what the solution is going to look like and you can verify this here you see so now we have the reacting torque you can see this in the first one there was no reacting top just an applied top but because it's a cantilever you also need the the reaction will be put i mean the, 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 the force at that point as well as a talk all right so and then um, you have uh, the results here with all the equations for this so this is the problem and if we just to show it because for this one we don't have a proof that um, what uh, what was done here is correct so there is a there is a website where you can go and then okay i think we have some kind of simple problems here let me check a uh, little for the one that has some kind of i mean other problems so that we can solve or work with so not pdf okay no it's, it's the same thing Okay, let's look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see maybe something like that. I'll just pick a picture and just look at okay, this may help. All right. Okay, let's look at okay, this um okay, let's look at this uh, simple problem. This one is pretty forward. We can just quickly look at this. We have the data length is uh ten. 
then we have um, 5 kilo Newton per meter after the train C and the point B that is from 2 to 6 then you have a 25 kilo Newton at the now and then, then we have two supports there is one support at B here and there is another support at A so we can just quickly write that out um, how that's going to be so we have let's put this guy here right here so that we can look at the problem and then write out um, this thing so it's going to be SFBM SFBM and then I say uh, let me write this a string problem that is online All right okay so we we'll have um, a vector the length of the beam is 10 we have one support at 0 then we have another one at 6 alright so then the force uh, there is a distributed force of 5 kN so I do this right I and mean, then the color bracket DF uh, and the string I conclude that then uh, with a force of uh, 5 acting down that's minus 5 then we have um, is acting between the points 2 and 6 right so let me close the bracket then the next color bracket for the concentrated force that is minus 25 uh, but first you bring the key cf then minus 25 up and downward uh, so it's wrong here uh, it's not responding so it's wrong Okay, so it's now responding to so minus 25. Um, then at a point 10, so it's the end, right? So then we'll close the bracket. That's all. Then we'll run and let's see if what we get looks exactly like what I have here. All right, so this is the diagram. So we have 10 kilo newton acting downward here, you have um, 25 kilo newton here and then this is the results that you have so we can just quickly compare this with this okay you can see we have 10 kilo newton here and that is okay let's just look at uh, compare this and the and the share and the diagram here so this goes to 100 and you have this that is 100 because this is scaled by 100 so minus 1 that is 100 here and here you have 20 so this is minus 2 this is a minus 2 0 and that is exactly what we have uh, so right here you have um, uh, minus one and this is scaled by 10 so that is 10 all right so then you have the positive side here that goes to 25 so here you have to put five and that's just simply how to solve shear force bend moment problem using MATLAB